I wanted to uh, do a series of videos that looked at unique colors. So, you know, I think we're really good in like the browns, the mauves, and those kind of dark chocolate browns. But then there's like this whole subculture, <laughs> wink wink, um, of colors that are really unique. And that's what I kind of want to focus on are like these really cool, unique sh shades, I mean, like red for eyeshadows. For a long time, you couldn't find a good red. So I want to kind of show you what reds that I really like. Kara C did a video like this with regards to blacks that she has in her collection and just showing the pigmentation, the ones that she really likes to use um, from her from her collection, whether it be singles or whether it be from palettes themselves. I want to do kind of the same idea, but with really unique colors. So as I said, reds would be on my list and I'm going to show you those eventually. And But today I wanted to start off with one of my favorite colors to use, uh, even monochromatically. And then you're going to like, how can you, when I tell you the color, you're like, what? And the color is mustard. Mustard is one of my absolute favorite colors to especially wear on my eyes. I don't wear a lot of that kind of color um, in my wardrobe, but I do like to wear it as makeup. Um, so I'm gonna tell you the first palette that kind of started off for me. I feel this, this type of trend. Um, and I feel like it didn't get all the credit it deserved when, especially when this came out. I think this was like ahead of its time, to be honest with you. And the palette I'm gonna be talking about, let me just grab it from over here, is from Lime Crime, and it's the Venus 2 palette. And the color is appropriately named as Mustard. Now they do have their best ofs, uh, I think, palette out right now uh, as a, you know, fan favorite. And four of the flower of colors from this palette is in that bigger palette. So it just shows you how influential this particular Venus 2 was for people. It was very unique when it came out. And I attribute this mustard shade right there and probably Pigeon, which is really interesting duochrome. So duochromes weren't quite out of time, but I want to focus in again on like mustard shades. This mustard has a beautiful yellow warmth. I love this shade. Love it, love it. I'll show you swatches at the end of the video um, just because I think it takes too long to keep like cutting back and forth. So I'll have them all named uh, at the end. So the next one I wanted to talk about that kind of brought my brought my attention to this particular color was a shade from MAC and it's called Interrupted. This used to be a shade in the Pro line. So it used to be this massive, massive palette, or massive like pan. Uh, it was discontinued when the whole Pro Longwear line was discontinued, but then it got brought back and there was a whole bunch of colors that did get brought, uh, that MAC brought back um, because I believe of popularity and because of how amazing they are. This is, has a little more brown to it and a little bit more, I'm gonna say warmth to it. Um, the other one was more of a yellowy tone. This still has obviously yellow in it, but it's definitely a little bit wearable or more wearable. Um, I love it, one of my favorites. So then, if I remember I talked about how Venus 2, I think it was a response to the Venus 1 palette, was well, which is kind of like more of a pinkier tone. Venus 2 is definitely a grunge palette and grungier. I'm gonna say the same thing for this next one. Uh, when Modern Renaissance came out, again, it was really pretty and romantic and, and you know everything that's like pinky and, and so forth. While it's really cool because we never saw anything like that before, I would say the next launch was more my speed and it's a subculture. I still love this color story and I'm sad that people have such polarizing opinions about it. I have the reformulated palette um, and one of the colors here that, I, that really got my attention was this color Edge. I really enjoy uh, pairing this particular color with Untamed or Destiny um, and anything or of this like turquoise, uh, teal color or even like plums. I think it does have a huge range. You can almost use it as a neutral to be quite honest with you because it does pair well with a lot of shades. It is a very wearable color and I think a lot of people are a little bit scared of it. Um, it's just a more wearable yellow uh, with brown. So 
to me, that just makes it super neutral, super easy to use. Uh, this color was, or this color story, I think is phenomenal. I love it for fall, uh, especially, but yeah. I have kind of hazily green eyes, a little bit more olivey, foresty green kind of color. So I like to pair those kind of muddy, swampy, uh, as what Teresa's Dead calls it, like bog queen or swamp queen. <laughs> I love it. Um, she and I are on the same page. So give me a good green that's olive khaki in that, in that realm and this, what we're talking about today. Uh, and I'm, I'm a happy, happy camper. So then the next one I want to talk about is from Natasha Denona. When I got this palette, I was so delighted. This again is so up my alley. I'm talking about her gold palette. This particular color here is called Dijon and Dijon is again a matte, super creamy and it's more on the brown tones, but incredibly wearable. I love the way it goes on. It's definitely a yellow brown. It's a little bit deeper than the other ones, um, but it's still in that same realm and I'm super, super happy I have it. So love that. I know I don't have a lot of singles, but I think a lot of palettes nowadays, especially if you're gonna find an olive green in your palette or a khaki, um, you will find probably a mustard very close to it. And that is very true for this next one. This is by Kaleidos, this is the Futurism one. And this is again, probably one of my favorite color stories that they have in this particular line. And this is all those greens, olives that I'm talking about. And this one is the shade Radioactive. And again, yellow, yellow brown, honey, whatever you want to call it, it is fantastic. And it definitely fits in to the color story that I'm talking about today. Okay, just a few more to go. And then I'm going to talk about uh, lips. So this is from Aha. Uh -huh, this is from ColourPop, and this is their Aha uh -huh Honey palette. Now I know this is a honey, but I find um, that ambery, Dijon-y, like mustardy kind of tone can also probably fit in with if you have more honey tones. Um, I'm looking at Totally Buggin', which is kind of a lighter yellowish honey tone, and then also Buzzkill. Uh, again, it's on more on what Dijon and Edge and uh, Mustard from Lime Crime would be, uh, but those would definitely, if you have this palette, then you definitely have some really good potential options there. So fantastic. I love this palette too. Okay, so now we have some eyeshadows out of the way. I want to talk about other areas of her face and using like, if you want to say do a monochromatic type of look without being like, well, how can you put you know, that yellowy color on your lips, I have a shade for you. So this particular company is a little indie company called um, Ebony, Ebony. And I have the shade Frenchie. And Frenchie is one of their kind of iconic shades. This definitely has more of a grungy green almost like olivey undertone to it. Um, Black Moon also has a shade, I think there's like one called Harvest, but also Hazel um, that are in that kind of realm as well. Uh, give me the freaky kind of like colors and I'm all over it. Um, so this is a little bit harder to wear, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I definitely have to be of a certain um, hair color and skin tone in order to actually get away with wearing this. Um, my friend who has like really raven dark hair and kind of a lighter yellowish tone to her skin uh, looks beautiful in this and she's got dark chocolate brown eyes and it looks absolutely stunning. Anyway, this is a great one if you want that monochromatic look. Fabulous, fabulous. So I was also on the hunt to find a color that was maybe a little bit more wearable and not in a liquid liquid lipstick kind of formulation. Uh, so I did try and look. Um, there's another shade here and this is from Melt and this is Voyeur. This is definitely a yellowed brown shade. Um, and I think a very wearable. I find it very comfortable, it's matte. I think they do have another shade, it's like I think seven, is it 739 or 779 or something of that nature? And I think it does have a little bit more of a Dijon type uh, color to it. But if you want something similar within that tone, then I think you'd be okay with Voyeur. 
I went to the drugstore and I was on a hunt to find a yellowy beige or a yellowy um, light color, uh, a yellowy brown. And I found two that were potential. They're very, very light and they are a little bit difficult to wear, but nonetheless, I found them. So one of them is from, they're both from Rimmel and one is from their Stay Matte and one of them is from their Stay Satin line. Um, Stay Satin is Take a Chill Pill. Uh, it definitely has a yellowy beige undertone. And then the Stay Matte color is a raw embrace. And this is definitely more, I would say concealer lips, but definitely yellow undertone for sure. Um, and if, again, if you want that kind of tonal uh, monochromatic look, these might be a good option as well. Bite used to have these multi sticks and I love wearing this. If I definitely want a monochromatic look, this is going to be my um, go-to because it is for lips, cheeks, and eyes. And this is in the shade Blondie. I'm so sad they got rid of these. I loved these because they're just dry enough and have enough cream kind of texture to be able to wear all over and truly be able to wear all, all, all over. Um, Blondie was a great one. I think there was another one called Biscotti or um, I want to say even Almond. I think will also fit those kind of tones that we're talking about today. Um, the last lip color that I have is from uh, MAC and it's called Naturally Transformed. It's a matte. I do believe they've discontinued it, which is very, very sad. But again, it fits that same kind of tone, that yellowy brown um, that can be worn all together. I really like the looks of these. Um, this one I thought would kind of work. This is from Dose of Color. It's their Desert Suede. In the packaging, it looks like it has that. It definitely does have a yellow kind of undertone, but there is enough pink that kind of makes it not so much, but I thought it was worth like just talking about. Um, and then lastly is going to be an actual liner that you could probably use all over the eye or wherever you needed it. And this is from Melt as well. And this is the Cultura. It was uh, launched last year with their Amor Eterno line. Love that line. So it's such a great, great launch. Um, and this is definitely a nice mustard that would fit the bill. <laughs> Love this. Uh, but yeah, again, I will have swatches at the end of the video to show you the different color like combinations. Now, when I'm pairing um, um, yellow uh, mustard eyes, I want to kind of downplay obviously the blush because I don't want that to, it'll be to take over. So I'm gonna keep it all within the same kind of color family. So beiges for me are what I like to go to. My, my favorite is called Uber Beige by uh, Bobbi Brown and it's in the like pots. Um, I don't think you can get that anymore. Uh, again, I use Blondie to kind of do a monochromatic look because it can be used on the cheeks. And I guess if you're, you know, you can also use your lipstick to kind of help bring it together. So those are my choices in terms of mustard and let me know what any other colors that you guys maybe find hard to, to find or a good one or what have you. So I'm looking at like doing reds, like I said, purples, any kind of unique shades I have to my collection, uh, even like olives and khakis. Those are kind of the shades that I really like and that I find really interesting and are very drawn towards. Uh, I just did a whole, order a place an order with JD glow and a lot of them are in those kind of in that kind of realm so let me know down below um, subscribe thumbs up it really helps my channel and I appreciate it please take care of each other and take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon bye bye <music>